The Message of a Lifetime I went to Kroger's the other night around 10 p.m. I came out and the parking lot was totally empty, not one car. I drove slowly to explore the side of the parking lot where a new fence is. New construction of over a thousand new apartments being built on the other side of that fence. Mostly young people will be moving in with their whole lives ahead of them. With a smile on my face, I just sat there, imagining the adventures they will have, as well as the yet unknown happiness and discoveries. I sat there for a long time and finally ended with a prayer that each person would be directly blessed by God, as I have been. I prayed that they would have the courage to go towards opportunity and discovery instead of being locked in by fears. Young people have a saying, it's called FOMO, fear of missing out. I have discovered that the fear can be so overwhelming they will never even try. Don't be afraid that life will end. Be afraid that it will never begin. Life's power begins when you know that God's power moves beyond the self-imposed prison of fear. I have counseled with people, even in their 50s, who admitted they spent their whole lives doing something that mom or dad wanted them to do that they never wanted to do, and they, they admitted they were fearful to make a change. They asked me, is it too late? To start living now? The answer is no. My friend, I have been blessed by doing a work that I absolutely love. Even though, at times, it has been exhausting to my human self. It has been exhilarating and adventurous beyond anything that I can describe. Hunter S. Thompson said, Life is not a journey to the grave with the intent of arriving safely, but rather to slide in broadside, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and loudly proclaiming, Wow! What a ride! I am coming to the end journey this way, with my body totally worn out, but with a broad smile on my face, totally satisfied, I did it all. Thanks to God, my life had great flavor and seasoning. When Jesus was at the Last Supper, he knew very well that he was going to die, and he gave what is now called the great commandment, that love is the most important thing in religion. It totally defines your relationship with God and with others. I've been with many people that were dying. And some of their most profound statements they wanted to say was before they died. They would say, come over here, and they'd whisper something, and they'd say, I have something to share with you, and it would always be meaningful. Well, this is the case with me now. Mark Twain said, the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you found out why. Now, I am no one special, but God worked through me, and it became miraculous. I was being guided by God even when I didn't understand the concept. 
Most of the time, I didn't know what I was doing. I started this strange newfangled online ministry, and I didn't own a computer. I resisted technology. I considered myself a poor writer, even worse speller, and I couldn't type. I only had a few dozen email addresses. <laughs> I've often said impossible with God means I'm possible. I couldn't have done it alone. I had help every step of the way. Now, I'm not saying that I've never had failures in my life. Oh, I've had many failures. My failures in life were all my own lower human mind ideas. But they weren't defeats. The failures make me smile now, even laugh out loud, because they were stepping stones leading me again to God. Life does not go straight up from failure to success. Rather, life is like a spiral that is closely threaded. And we're always going up. And we always have a higher view of where we were in yesterday life and decisions. I am euphoric as I talk to you. God has invested in me come through me, and I am overflowing with awe and with gratitude. I have discovered that life is not about the harvest that we reap, but by the seeds we plant. Let this be my gift to you. Find your self-faith. It not only helps, it is everything. Now, I'm not an old minister promoting a certain agenda. I'm not promoting a particular church or synagogue or any. God doesn't care where you go to church. I am telling you of your direct, constant connection with God right where you are. God is your help in every need. Faith is not an end. It is a practice. Practice your faith. The ordinary becomes extraordinary with God's working through us, as us. Life is not a series of big events, but little things that make the difference, that are cumulative. With God's partnership, the little things become great and make a very big difference in your life. The ultimate success is loving your life. The test of any church is how loving are they. Now there are many forms of God healing. My dear grandfather got Alzheimer's in the 1970s. This intelligent man literally lost all of his thinking capacity. We had him at John Hopkins in Baltimore, then the top research place in the world for this disease. I was told by them, looking me straight in the eye, that it usually skips a generation, that I would probably get it. This is a frightening thing for a young man to hear. Would that be me someday? This was my first strong prayer as a teenager that this condition would never come to me. I am very grateful for this answered prayer. I've experienced many forms of healing. Of late, when I was told that I had the possibility for surgery for pancreatic cancer, 
I was told that I would be to 